Hi everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going over part two of the osmosis and IV fluids videos. In this video, we'll cover isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic solutions, a trick to help you remember all the specific IV fluids without having to memorize, and some of the different clinical uses for each fluid type. You can use the timestamps in the video description to jump ahead. So to start, I definitely recommend watching the first video on osmosis if you aren't already familiar with the concept. To recap, osmosis is the movement of water from a higher water concentration to a lower water concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. Here's our little cell again. Remember that we have extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid, and they always like to maintain a nice balance of water and salts, especially the water concentration. Remember, it likes to remain the same on the inside and the outside of the cell. What we're going to do now is explore what happens when we place a cell into three different types of environments or solutions. So starting with an isotonic solution, iso means the same and tonic refers to the solute concentration, which is just the salt in this case. So an isotonic solution has the same or equal concentration of water and salt as the intracellular fluid. So the isotonic solution is essentially the extracellular fluid now, while the inside of the cell is still the intracellular fluid. And what was the rule for osmosis again? Water moves from a higher water concentration to a lower water concentration. But in this case, everything is equal. We have equal water and salt concentrations, so osmosis does not take place. The water doesn't move in or out of the cell, so the cell stays the same size. Next is the hypotonic solution. Hypo means under or less, and again, tonic just refers to the salt concentration. So this means that a hypotonic solution has a lower salt concentration. So if we add more water to the solution, it becomes a hypotonic solution. Now there's a lower salt concentration in the solution. Now, what does this mean for our little cell? Well, it's not going to be so little anymore. And why is that? Remember, osmosis, water moves from a higher water concentration to a lower water concentration. So water concentration is clearly higher in the solution, which means that water will rush into the cell to the area with lower water concentration to try and even out. This will cause the cell to grow or swell up with water. I always remember it this way, hypo grow. So hypotonic solutions cause the cells to grow. Remember that, hypo grow. And finally, we have the hypertonic solution. Hyper means above or more. So this means that there is a higher salt concentration in a hypertonic solution. So if we add a lot of salt, the solution becomes hypertonic. And now it's the inside of the cell that has the higher water concentration. So water moves from a high water concentration to a low water concentration. This means water will rush out of the cell now, causing the cell to shrink or shrivel in an attempt to even out the water concentration. So hypertonic solutions cause the cells to shrink. Hopefully this helps gives you a better idea on how these solutions work. Next, let's go over some of the common specific IV solutions seen here. One of the most common isotonic solutions is 0.9% sodium chloride, also known as normal saline or NS. Because normal saline is an isotonic solution, we know that it will not cause the cells to grow or shrink. Its salt concentration is just right to match that of the cells. If you take a quick look at the hypotonic solutions, you'll see other concentrations of sodium chloride, but take a look at their percentages. They're all lower than 0.9%. And on the right, for hypertonic solutions, they're all higher than 0.9%. Again, this is because normal saline is just right. It's equal. It's isotonic. If we take out a bit of salt from the 0.9% sodium chloride, the solution becomes hypotonic, just like the 0.33% or the 0.45% sodium chlorides. And conversely, if we add more than 0.9% sodium chloride, the solution becomes hypertonic. So 3% and 5%, those are going to be hypertonic solutions. So that's one quick and easy way to distinguish between your different sodium chloride solutions. And we can apply the same rule to dextrose 5% in water, another isotonic solution. Dextrose 10% in water, that's going to be hypertonic. Dextrose 5% in normal saline, well, if normal saline is already isotonic and we're adding dextrose 5%, then we're going to make it hypertonic as well. 
So hopefully that helps you work through some of the specific types of IV fluids without having to memorize all of them. And lastly, let's review the different uses of these IV fluids. To start, why would someone need an isotonic solution? Well, the main reason is fluid loss, like in a hypovolemic state. Isotonic solutions are used to replace fluid without the risk of changing the intracellular volume. So they can be used in patients with diarrhea, vomiting, blood loss. We do, however, have to monitor closely for signs of fluid overload if they were to get too much of the solution. Fluid overload may present as rapid weight gain, edema or swelling, shortness of breath due to pulmonary edema, and more. Remember, hypotonic solutions, hypo grow, they cause the cells to grow. So why would we want the cells to grow? Well, hypotonic solutions are used when the cell is dehydrated and fluids need to be pushed back intracellularly. This happens when patients develop diabetic ketoacidosis, or DKA, or hypoosmolar hyperglycemia. We want to avoid hypotonic solutions in those with trauma or burns due to the risk of third spacing. Hypotonic solutions have been shown to increase intracranial pressure, so we also want to avoid it in those who already have increased intracranial pressure. Hypertonic solutions can be used as electrolyte replacement, like in hyponatremia, by drawing sodium back into the extracellular fluid. They have also been shown to help decrease intracranial pressure by removing fluid from the brain tissues, so that's another indication. But as the fluid leaves the cells and enters the extracellular space, it adds to the blood volume, so watch for signs and symptoms of fluid overload here as well. Dextrose 5% in water is technically an isotonic solution in the bag, but the sugars are quickly consumed by the body, leaving mostly water left behind, which is a hypotonic solution to our cells. So keep in mind, you may even see D5W labeled as a hypotonic solution for this reason. These are just some of the many possible uses for IV fluid administration. Lastly, IV administration can lead to infiltration and phlebitis, especially in hypotonic and hypertonic solutions. So always monitor the IV site carefully. And that's about it for the basics of IV fluids and osmosis. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.